It's Tuesday, May 14th, and today's topic is migrating from G Suite over to Office 365. Today, I talk with Tommy about some things that you should think about. We primarily focus in on migrating from Google Sites over to SharePoint Online, and then some other things that you might want to think about along with Google Drive and migrating content off of that, and um, some other topics that uh, move beyond just the simple migration of email. Enjoy. Hi, and welcome to the Work Together Better podcast. This is your host, Danny Ryan. This is Three Wheels' official podcast about enterprise collaboration how people, process, and technology combine to help organizations, departments, and teams work together better. Today, we're talking about migrating from G Suite to Office 365. I'm here with Tommy Ryan. How are you doing, Tommy Ryan? I'm doing well. Excellent. Coming off a long weekend. Oh, good weekend? I, yeah, I had my first farmer's market. Excellent. Iron, Iron, Iron Mountain Organics is legit, man. It's legit. Legit. First dollar. Excellent, excellent. First dollar. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Today, uh, we wanted to talk to you about, uh, we're sort of continuing the conversations with um, different platforms, moving from different platforms over to Office 365. The discussion today is about uh, the big one, really a big one for us, which is Google G Suite and uh, making the move from that over into Office 365. I think some of the ones we've already talked about have been more of uh, social products like Facebook, uh, a workplace, for, workplace for Facebook, workplace by Facebook, one of those things. Uh, and Slack and uh, looking at G Suite, it's really comprehensive. It, it covers, um, you know, it, it also covers a lot of the, the Office products like uh, they, they have equivalents to Word and Excel and PowerPoint and, and uh, equivalents to OneDrive. And so it's really pretty comprehensive. Mail. <laughs> and, ma- and that little thing called that Mail. Little thing called Gmail. <laughs> that little thing called Gmail, which we're, which we're all pr- pr- probably pretty familiar with. Um, so as we looked at this, it was interesting because you know our background is, is helping people primarily around SharePoint and more recently around uh, things like Teams and OneDrive and mi- migrating co- uh, content over into those Office 365 products. And so as, as I sort of dived into it, I uh, noticed that, that um, number one, like unlike uh, some of the other things we've looked at, there's a pretty comprehensive set of tools for doing this, and especially for the email, email migration piece of things. And then there's, there's also tooling from companies that we are already partnering with uh, for migrating some of the document content. Uh, so it, it, it seems like something that's pretty well formed and that people um, have been doing and will continue to do uh, as they look at uh, you know one of the, using one of the big, big companies like Google or Microsoft's collaboration platforms. Yeah, I, I see a, a mature ecosystem for folks going from G Suite over to Office 365. So I think organizations that are looking at this, they have options. Probably the challenge they have is how do I do that in a proper way and how do I organizationally manage that process uh, of knowing what is the content I should bring over? How do I determine that? And how do I work with my end users to make sure we do the proper spring cleaning before we take that that move going from G Suite over to Office 365? And that way the content, when it gets over, it's discoverable, it's valuable, it's not cluttering mm-hmm. the platform. Um, so instead of just pushing the buttons and moving everything over without really assessing it, um, you know, we help organizations with how do you approach it and how do you manage it it was interesting looking at this um you know the google uh, if i look at google sites and uh they sort of have an equivalent to what's happened within the sharepoint world where there's sort of like a classic sites 
So the mm-hmm. older version of sites versus a newer modern experience. But theirs is not modern. It's just sites. It's just it's, it's the new, <laughs> new is modern. modern. <laughs> but they, you know, it's it's really it's for um, you know a responsive type of experience. It's it's set up. Um, so it was interesting to see that they've they've sort of done the equivalent from what Microsoft has done on the SharePoint side, which which is provide having a way for you to build out um, your intranet or yeah. series of team sites and having it something that you you know you can access from a mobile device or you know really mm-hmm. making it more of a a, a content that that uh, you're not just viewing on your desktop, but also viewing via mobile device. Right. I think it speaks to how long it's been out there. Sure. And and trying to kind of bridge that gap of here's all this content that's out there represented in a certain way. Now there's newer ways of managing that content, newer, newer ways of storing it and putting it into content and having you know, that bridge to say, how do we get this old content and a different structure into the new way of doing things? And Mm -hmm. so it's interesting how similar it is when you look at the the new, newer Google sites compared to the modern pages, um, similar type of widget view and Mm -hmm. and kind of, you know, adding sections as you go. um, And, uh, you know, a similar look and feel. Yep, too. it's just they just have you know um, a page layout type of view, and then in the SharePoint world, it's more of like web parts, so different things you can lay out on the page, and um, and it'd be inter- I would be interested. I don't know if I've uh, um, whether companies are going to be using this more for like team sites versus their overarching intranet, or really is, is it a fully formed platform for building out an intranet. Um, it, it seems to me like it might be more along the lines of uh, this is good for like team sites or departmental sites, but I'm not, you know, not sure if people are using this to build out a full-fledged intranet or not. Um, but could maybe probably it's one of those things you can, but whether people are doing it or not. But I think I think that's definitely an area where if you're looking, people are looking for help for moving uh from Google Sites over to SharePoint Online, that's definitely an, an area that um, they may be looking for some outside help from a consulting firm to get that moved over. I think the other thing that we've we've run into is the um, that long term storage, you know, the files. So moving from Google Drive over into Microsoft OneDrive, it's one of those things that I think companies look for outside help to make sure that they do that properly. Uh, have the right process in, in, in place for doing that and ensuring to make sure that goes out well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Another thing that comes into play is information architecture and thinking about where are the destination locations, what are the content types mm-hmm. and the future state of where you're going to store this. So it's easy to search, easy to navigate to mm-hmm. versus... Um, you know, being confusing to the end user of where's this content now? Yeah, the in the I think the the one of the other areas where um, as I was looking at this, I was thinking like where's um, you know Microsoft Teams has come along so quickly, and I think we were looking at you know not only Jive but also some of the other social products. It's sort of it's looking like some of that content would get moved over into Microsoft Teams or into Yammer. And as I looked at the G Suite stuff, and they they have yeah you know they have Google Groups, Groups. they've got yeah. um, uh, Google Plus, they have uh, community sites. So some of that content as well is helping people decide where that content goes, and um, you know coming up with an overarching plan for where all of this uh, content is going to move over into Office 365. Some of this stuff I think is um, there'll be there's a lot of this that that's sort of a uh, you know can be done point and click, you know, just sort of using a tool and moving the stuff over. And um, I've always, when talking with like Kirk, who leads up our our migration practice, talking about migrations, and he emphasizes, you know, you can, um, a migration can technically go perfectly, but it's not be a success if you don't nail the communication piece of this. So I think uh, also looking at this, I sort of think of maybe where someone could use help from an outside firm would be sort of like, what is the overarching plan for moving all of this content, you know, making sure everything, and, and not and not just the content too. I also think of like 
the um, profile information, the security. You were talking about, you know, the information man. You know, it's what, how am I architecture, information right? architecture? Mm -hmm. Thinking about not, you know, you can look at it sort of like one-off pieces of moving things over, but sort of an overarching plan for where all of this. There's so many overlaps between G Suite and Office 365. Is to come up with that overarching plan for how are we going to do this? How's this going? You know, what what's the the, the process that we're going to use to do this? to do this successfully and what's that communication plan look like yeah and what i've noticed in our maturity over time i've seen this 80 20 flip for us where in the beginning when we did migrations we're very quick to run to let's start you know cranking out these migrations and so we had about 20 percent of our time in the planning phase to build out that communication plan, build out information architecture, determine what's gonna move. And then the 80% um, being towards moving this content. Mm -hmm. And what I'm noticing more recently is it's more 80% of working on that plan and then 20% of moving it. Um, because there, the least amount of content you move, the better off you are. Mm -hmm. and, and trying to understand what is that content that needs to come over, how do we determine um, where it's gonna go, and does there need to be any cleanup you know, before or after. So when it's moved to the new location, it's more valuable versus it's just a bunch of stuff that we dumped in the basement and we have to kind of open up the boxes and search through things to find things. Um, and it's almost lost mm -hmm. um, versus you looking at, and you can always make these analogies like moving that I'm going to, I can move to a new house and I can do no prep and the movers get there and we just take everything and dump it in the basement. Or I thought about where am I going? What furniture is going to go in what room and what, can I leave behind and donate or have someone pick up that I don't have to move it? I don't have to put in that work of moving it. Um, and then I have a better product at the end. If, if I've not moved over a bunch of junk, I've moved over exactly what I need, put it in the right place. I'm a much more productive, happier person and uh, post that move. Mm -hmm. So we're finding that we can add more value, more in that conversation and more of that planning and organization around what should come over, where should it go, and how do we get the community involved to make this as seamless as possible. Awesome. Great conversation. I think this is a great start. Uh, if folks are interested in this, we have a service offering um, that's for Office 365 migrations. Um, this is one of many different platforms that we're looking at helping people move off of and over into Office 365. As you go to look at the uh, service offering page on our website, let us know um, uh, that this is one of the the areas that you're one of the platforms that you're looking to migrate off of um, and uh, there's a you can fill out that information and we'll follow up with you we we are also I want to emphasize um, we are putting together we've got a digital workplace briefing um, that we have that's free for folks that we take a couple of hours and I think just gets us set it uh, set out in the right direction because um, overarching, I think a lot of this, it, it all falls underneath uh, your digital workplace. And so when we're looking at consolidating off of these different platforms, we want to sort of talk about where we're moving to and what we're trying to enable with the digital workplace. So uh, if you're interested in that, just come to 3 and on the Contact Us page, you'll see at the bottom of that page, you can say, I'm interested in the digital workplace briefing. So drop by there and let us know you're interested and, and look forward to, to continuing this conversation with you. Thanks, Tommy, so much for taking the time to do this. Sure thing. Thank you so much and have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. listening to the Work Together Better podcast. We're available on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and TuneIn. If you're looking for a partner to help you craft a modern digital workplace in the Microsoft Cloud, please come by and see us at 3will.com. That's the number three spelled out, W-I-L-L.com. 
Thank you and have a great day.